James. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity or is at war with God, for it is not subjected to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But we are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. For if we live after the flesh, we shall die. But if we through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, we shall live. For as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God, 15th and last. For we have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but we have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Amen. Amen. And I want us to zoom in on the verse that talks about the carnal mind being um, enmity against God, verse 7, for it is not subjected to the law of God, neither indeed can be. Amen. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we come one more time as we come to bless our meal. We ask mighty God that you will move by your spirit, that you will cause Lord God, our spirit man to be flooded with light, that the spirit of wisdom and revelation will rest upon us heavily, that you will glorify yourself even in the midst of your people, that we will encounter you in a way that will bring transformation to our lives. We ask God that as we feast at your table, that every kind and form of disorder in our lives will be rectified that everything that does not line up which your will will come into alignment this morning as we give you thanks and as we give you praise in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Our topic this morning is as a man think it. Amen. As a man think it. And it is coming out of Proverbs uh, 23, verse 7. It says, for as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. And so I want us to recognize this morning that the thoughts that we have, the, the processes that we go through in our minds will eventually become the reality that we are going to walk in. Amen. I want us to recognize this morning that the mind, our mind, or the mind of a man is the engine of his destiny. Amen. That regardless of what 
you have heard God speak regardless of the promises, regardless of the direction that he gives. If there is not a decision made towards it, you can either uh, propel yourself towards your destiny or you can derail it. I want you to recognize this morning that the vision that God gives, it is released in your spirit, but it is translated and it is interpreted and accepted by your mind. Let me say that again. Whatever God reveals to you, it is given or released in your spirit, but it is translated. It is interpreted and it is accepted in your mind. And so God can give you a glorious vision, yet you can reject it based on your mindset. Hallelujah. God can make you the greatest and the most glorious promise, yet your mindset can cause you to reject it. The thought processes, your ideas even of self can cause you brothers and sisters, to reject it when the angel of the Lord visited Gideon and began to speak to Gideon about who he was. Gideon, at the first, could not conceive it. He could not, he could not understand why God would declare him to be a mighty man of valor. And the first argument that Gideon are positioned against what God spoke to him was that he was from the least of the tribes of Israel. In other words, he began to point to his background. He began to point to his family life. He began to point to the physical or literal reality that was around or surrounding his life. He was, uh, he was declaring are uh, uh, his past experiences determining that based on his experience he could not qualify for the promise that God had declared over his life and so brothers and sisters God had to reposition Gideon hallelujah and pull out of Gideon what was locked up inside of him from the foundations of the world. Pull out of Gideon what was locked up on the inside of him regardless of his family life, regardless of his background, regardless of his environment. Hallelujah. And because Gideon saw himself as uh, diminished and saw himself as small and saw himself as irrelevant, regardless of the fact that there was a mighty man on the inside, Gideon would have lived and died and never experienced it if the angel of the Lord did not encounter Gideon and began to call out of him what was deposited in him. Listen, Gideon lived was in his environment, was going up and down, was just, just uh, getting by, yet there was might on the inside of him. He was just taking whatever life threw at him. At the time that the angel spoke to Gideon, the Philistines were oppressing Israel. What was Gideon doing at the, at uh, the threshing floor? He was hiding food from the Philistines. He was in a state, brothers and sisters, robbed of his identity, not knowing who he was and had to be struggling to make ends meet, had to be struggling just to survive, struggling just to find food. And yet he was a mighty man of valor. I want to say to you this morning that Gideon's mindset are triggered are the, the insufficiency that was in his environment. Gideon's mindset accepted 
all the frustration that was in his life, Gideon's mindset, brothers and sisters, are, are, are accepted and received are the struggle that he was in. And God recognized that if Gideon was ever going to rise up to become whoever he has called him to be, he needed an encounter. If Gideon was ever going to rise to the level where God had called him to be, he needed an encounter. And so we are here this morning. Because a whole lot of us, we keep pointing to our experiences and pointing to our environment and pointing to our, our physical DNA and pointing to our, our family life. But God's idea concerning you far transcends and is far above any human experience that you have had up to this point. I must say it again. I said God's idea concerning you is far outweighs and is far above any human experience that you can point to and that you are gone through or is even facing at this time. And so, brothers and sisters, we have the ability to argue and to reason our way out of our own destinies because of our level of thinking. I'm going to say it again. We can argue and reason our way out of destiny because of the level of our thinking. Because let me help you with something this morning. When God gives a word and a vision, it is not supposed to make sense to your carnal mind. In fact, it is supposed to blow your mind because it is coming from an order and a level that has nothing to do with your natural ability to reason and to understand that's why you need revelation and God gives a vision that we outweighs you and outweighs the reality that you are living in so that you will learn to lean and to depend on him in order for it to come to pass it is a God idea God it is a God initiative it is a God vision it is a God God thought, yeah, God thought the thing from the foundations of the world. And because there is no time in eternity, whatever God thinks is now, there is no tomorrow in God's mindset. There is no yesterday in God's mind. It is present, it is now. And so if it is a God thing, the Bible says that the counsel of the Lord, it stands for ever the thought of his heart to all generations, meaning that there are no limitations with the mind of God. And so, brothers and sisters, it is not supposed to be doable in your own strength, in your own capacity. You are going to need the enablement of the spirit. And listen, God does not need to satisfy your understanding and your reasoning ability to do what he needs to do or else he would not be God. He can uh, uh, bypass the natural processes and order in your thinking to get what he needs to get done, to get it done at the time that he needs to get it done. Hallelujah. And so God does us a favor when he makes what he desires to do. Ah, uh, he breaks it down to the point that our, our, our minds cannot absorb it. Hallelujah. And the Bible says that God speaks the end from the beginning according to man's 
are man's ability to understand, meaning he shows you the end result. Ah, brothers and sisters, they are, it is said of God that he is not necessarily the one who gives a lot of detail because in the mind of God, he does not need to give ah, a lot of detail. The only person in the equation that needs detail is the human being that is being assigned to do what he has declared must be done. Hallelujah. And so he shows us the end from the beginning and causes us now to begin to pray and then he begins to download it bit by bit because I'm going to tell you something. If God ever revealed everything that he was going to do in order to get you to where he has called you to, many of us would not be able to sustain. Many of us would walk away. Uh, as a matter of fact, we would begin to run away when we see what is going to be required of us and make no mistake for every destiny there is a price to pay for every purpose for every measure of anointing for every expanse of the glory of God on the life of a man there is a price that he paid our brothers and sisters and so when you see anointed men and anointed women of God that are doing everything exploits that are doing our, our unusual things in the name of the Lord. There ought to be a level of respect for that individual because there has been a heavy price paid to be where that individual is. If that person is genuinely anointed of God, genuinely walking in the power of God, there is a price Sometimes a debilitating price. Ah, oh, brothers and sisters. Ah, oh, somebody said, then what does it cost to get that level of anointing or to get to that place? I'm going to let you know it's going to cost you everything. Hallelujah. It is going to cost you everything. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. And so, brothers and sisters, the man or the woman that is going to hold on to an anointing cannot be weak-minded, cannot be weak-willed, cannot be the kind of person that is easily shaken or easily moved. And God will cause you to be on the backside of a desert and begin to uh, kill your flesh and begin to take you through our seasons of warfare and take you through the school of the spirit so that when you are elevated you will be able to say like Jesus the God of this world is coming and has nothing in me meaning he has no place of opportunity to strike me because I am crucified to the world and the world is crucified to me Hallelujah. I want you to understand today that destinies do not die, but they can be transferred, they can be frustrated, and they can be aborted. A man who decides that he is not going to pay a price. The person who decides that what God is saying is too much and rejects it. God is not going to violate the will of that individual. He is going to search and find another person to carry out his agenda in the earth. And so a destiny is not uh, a destiny for a man to fulfill. What a destiny is, is the destination that God wants his will to reach in the earth. I must say it again. I said a destiny is not what an individual fulfills. The individual becomes the carrier of 
of the destiny. What a destiny is, is the will of God finding its expected end. The will of God finding its last, our uh, uh, final destination or its location. Hallelujah. Likewise, man shall sooner die. They are transferred. Hallelujah. And so your mind becomes the engine because it is with your mind that you will either move towards delay or decline your purpose. Hallelujah. And so, brothers and sisters, the Bible says that it is with our mind that we serve the Lord. And so our service to God is mind dependent. Romans 7, 25. Hallelujah. And so the extent to which you will carry out or can carry out what God instructs is dependent on your thought processes. We can get the same instruction, the same mandate, yet you bring it to a whole other level. Hallelujah. And I just do the minimum to get the thing done. Will we both be rewarded? Absolutely. But the measure of our reward cannot be on the same level. Will we both have impact? Absolutely. But the level of our impact cannot be uh, the same because our uh, brothers and sisters, uh, the mind that uh, is going to become diligent, uh, the Bible says the one who puts in the greater measure of work, uh, diligence is effort, uh, diligence is stretching yourself, uh, diligence, brothers and sisters, uh, is labor in the spirit. The Bible says that God rewards those who are diligent. Hallelujah. And so, brothers and sisters, I want you to understand that if you believe we get the same assignment but if you believe even in your subconscious, because even in the subconscious, your actions are going to tell what your belief system is. Hallelujah. There are some things that are so ingrained in our minds that we do them automatically. Hallelujah. We don't think about brushing our teeth. We don't think about taking a shower. We don't think of cooking a meal. Us, because they have become so routine and so automatic. But there is a system to it. And it is embedded in your mind. Hallelujah. So if I believe that there are certain things that I cannot do, we get the same uh, assignment. God gives us the same promise. God declares the same thing over us. But if there are parts of that promise that I decide that I am not able to carry out, again, God is not going to defy your will. He's going to say, okay, you have come this far and you decide that you are not going to go any further. I'm going to rest it here while the other person decides that I am going all the way. Hallelujah. I am going to see and experience the full expression of God concerning this matter. Hallelujah. It's the same thing that happens between the one who gets the healing and the one who doesn't. The one who gets the miracle and the one who doesn't. The one who gets the breakthrough and the one who doesn't. You hear the same thing. You read the same scripture. You even may apply the same processes. But one man believes all the way. The other man believes halfway. And the results are final. Hallelujah. The outcome and the results in that season is final. Because you are going to reap what you sow. Hallelujah. 
And so, brothers and sisters, if you believe that you cannot get to a point of glory, if you believe that your ministry can never get beyond where it is, if you believe that your lifestyle will never move from where it is, it most likely never will. Hallelujah. Now, self doubt is different from God doubt. You can have a measure of self doubt, and it can be a mark of humility because you see your inadequacy before God. But when you doubt God's capacity to do what He said He will do, ah, uh, through you, it is no longer a measure of self doubt, it is a measure of God doubt. Hallelujah. That's why the Bible says that he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is our rewarder. Hallelujah. That's why the Bible says without faith it is impossible to please God. Hallelujah. And so yes, you are limited. Yeah, yes, you are limited and are, are restricted in your humanity. But because God said it, hallelujah, because God is the one who is empowering you, there is absolutely nothing that you cannot accomplish, hallelujah, upon this earth. Hallelujah. When the spies went into Jericho, and they spied out not only Jericho, but the car, uh, uh, Kena, and came back with the, what the Bible says was an evil report. They said that we are grasshoppers in the, uh, in the sight of the people that were in the land. And the Bible says it was an evil report. Was it a logical report? Yes, it was. Was it a practical report? Yes, it was, because in terms of physical size, the people that were in the land were like giants. They were physically bigger and larger than the Israelites. Hallelujah. But a, a logical report. Hallelujah. A practical report is not the report of the Lord. The, uh, the Bible says that whose report are you going to believe? Hallelujah. And so God said to the Israelites, you are well able to go in and to possess the land. Hallelujah. And the evil one Ah, uh, penetrated their hearts and their minds, and they saw themselves like grasshoppers. Their perception, their thinking, their thought processes would have denied them entry into the promise that God said was theirs. Hallelujah. Do you understand? How serious this was. God made a promise in Abraham. Ah, uh, uh, it would have been decades before. That means a generational blessing was upon the head of Abraham. And he was struggling down his bloodline. And here comes a people that were, were supposed to walk in the promise and would have blitzed would have uh, overruled and overturned a generational blessing and would have introduced a generational curse into their bloodline if they were not challenged, if they were not stopped, if there was not a stop order put on them, brothers and sisters, a generational curse. What would have been the curse? A curse of smallness, a curse of uh, uh, intimidation, 
a curse, brothers and sisters, that will ever rose up in that, uh, in that uh, bloodline that saw something that looked greater than them. They would automatically uh, begin to fold. They would automatically begin to uh, minimize themselves and crawl over in a corner and never take it off. Hallelujah. God had to deal with it and deal with it swiftly. God had to stamp it out and stamp it out swiftly. Because the blessing of Abraham was supposed to land upon this generation. Hallelujah. The tangible blessing of Abraham was supposed to land. Hallelujah. And God had to deliver them from a mindset for a perception that would have caused and denied them entry into a promise. Hallelujah. And so, brothers and sisters, God can make you our great promises in his work. And like the children of Israel, you can be locked out of the promise because of your thinking and your process. Hallelujah. You can shout over a promise. You can celebrate a promise. But it really has not hit your spirit. It really has not become a part of your belief system. In other words, it has not become systemic. It has not entered into your spiritual consciousness. And so you really do not believe it. Hallelujah. When God wants to birth something, he releases it in the spirit or in your spirit. Your mind becomes the transporter of the realities of heaven into the earth. I'm going to say it again. I said your mind becomes the transporter of the realities of heaven into earth. Hallelujah. Listen, your mind also is the transporter of satanic realities that are designed to sabotage and to stall your progress. It is also the transporter of thoughts and ideas that are independent of these two entities. What do I mean? If you make a decision or hold on to a thought that may have nothing to do with the devil and certainly has nothing to do with God, but you in your own mind and in your own thought decides that, well, you can go no further because watch this, a whole lot of the times we blame the devil for things that the devil has nothing to do with. If you make a decision that you will go no further, if you make a decision in your own mind then this is how it has always been and I'm going to die in this state that has nothing to do with the devil you made a decision and because you made a decision it becomes your reality it is transported and becomes the reality that you walk in hallelujah And we all know the phrase, what you see is what you get. Hallelujah. But I'm going to take it a little further today. What you see is what you have assigned or aligned yourself to. What you see is what you have believed. What you see is what you have a system to be built around, to reproduce after its kind. The Bible says as long as the earth is in existence, there will be seed, uh, time and harvest. And every seed, brothers and sisters, produces after its own kind. Hallelujah. And so, what is a mindset 
A mindset, brothers and sisters, is an established way of thinking. You have established that this is the way you are going to think. Hallelujah. And so when you see a pattern in your life and a particular outcome consistently coming, it can be traced back to an established mindset. Hallelujah. And as Proverbs says, what you, what you think you become or you become what you think. I want you to understand that thoughts are spiritual. They either reinforce the power of the Spirit or they attract or the power of the Holy Spirit or they attract negative spirits, negative situations, negative patterns and negative cycles to your life. Hallelujah. When a way of thinking is established, it becomes like a fortress that is heavily guarded. Why? Because your mind is trained to defend itself in its carnality. When you declare or decide that something is true, there is a subconscious uh, element of defense that you put up over that thing. Hallelujah. Especially if it is a thought or a mindset that is in your foundation, you were introduced to this kind of thinking as a child. Hallelujah. And the longer that thought process is there, is the more firm that fortress becomes. Listen, never allow a thought pattern or an idea to take root in your life that does not line up with the will of God, no matter how logical, no matter how practical it is. Hallelujah. Especially when you are already struggling uh, because of a faulty mindset. Do not allow anything else uh, to creep in uh, to establish or reinforce your bondage. Hallelujah. Because what the devil will do. Hallelujah. He will see and perceive where your mind is. Then he will come in to manipulate or to introduce thoughts and ideas to strengthen your bondage. Hallelujah. And understand when an ungodly, now listen, uh, an ungodly mindset may not look like a negative mindset on the outside. Hallelujah. What does this look like? Ah, a mindset that says that you ah, must just get your basic needs met in order to live and to be comfortable. Hallelujah. Nowhere in scripture does God connect the righteous to just getting by. It is not there. What he connects the righteous with is wealth and riches. What he connects the righteous with is to be able to lend and not to borrow. What he uh, connects the righteous with is to be advanced. Our brothers and sisters uh, so that men can see that you are blessed. Hallelujah. And so that kind of mindset does not align with the will or the word of God. Hallelujah. The mindset that says, well, I can control these symptoms with medication, but I may never get healed. That does not align with scripture. Hallelujah. 
We are not saying throw out your medication. We are saying stay on the medication, but believe God that the day is coming when you are going to be disease free and sickness free because it does not align with the word of God. Hallelujah. And so, brothers and sisters, I want you to understand that when are an ungodly mindset is allowed to reign over your life. Hallelujah. When an ungodly mindset stays there and it is not challenged, it stays there and there is no Shun towards are getting rid of it over time. Spirits will begin to attach itself to it. Hallelujah. And the moment spirits begin to attach themselves to uh, an ungodly mindset, they will begin to expand their dominion over your life and over your destiny. Hallelujah. Because I want you to recognize that a mindset is established, that it does not move. In other words, brothers and sisters, there is no intention for that mindset to move. Hallelujah. Because, listen, there is a level of sophistication there. The amplified says when you are passing down imaginations and every high thing that seeks to exalt itself against the knowledge of God, it says that you should cast down sophisticated arguments. Hallelujah. Something that is established on a high or a high level a degree of complexity. Hallelujah. It is a system. It also says that proud and arrogant ideas are who are they being arrogant against? It says they are arrogant and prideful against the knowledge of God. And that they must be brought up under captivity. Hallelujah. And so, brothers and sisters, if you can believe a negative thing and see it manifest in your life, how much more should you believe the thing that God has declared in his word? Listen, we believe the negative until it becomes a fact. Listen, we do not, listen, we do not argue against the thing that we see with our naked eye. We do not argue against the thing that we see manifesting in our lives. We do not argue when a new symptom of this disease begins to show up. And that's the thing. When your mindset is set, uh, set on uh, sickness and disease, you will find that uh, every now and again, another symptom. Because the enemy, uh, brothers and sisters, is a master of uh, magnifying and uh, exploiting problems. Hallelujah. We do not argue with the new symptom. We do not say, wait, where are you going? Don't you understand that this is the temple of the living God? What does the scripture say? That anything that defiles the temple must be destroyed. No, we do not argue against what we see with our physical senses and what we experience with our physical senses. We accept it. We go back to the doctor. We get another prescription. Yet, 
when God declares something, we are to against it. We question the validity of the thing. We don't need expression in our lives. We talk our way out of it. We reason our way out of it. Don't we see that this is absolute disorder? Don't you recognize that it is absolute contrariness? Don't you recognize that it is absolute confusion? Hallelujah. And so, brothers and sisters, what you need to argue against is the thing that does not line up with the will of God. What you need to unmask, what you need to cast out, what you need to put up a resistance against is the thing that refuses to submit itself to the will of God. Hallelujah. David said that the enemies of God must submit themselves to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so, brothers and sisters, it takes a mindset, an established way of thinking to overcome an established way of thinking. And so, if your mindset is giving you results that do not line up with the will of God, because watch this. Your faith is attached to your, uh, your ability to think. You believe with your mind. Hallelujah. And so not listen, you can have faith in a moment. When you are in a particular environment, when the presence of God shows up, but your belief system has not changed, how do you know that the system has not been established? You walk out of that environment, you walk out of that encounter, and the moment you look at your reality, you go back to what has been already established and programmed in your mind. You go back to the report setting. Listen. Your mindset is like the default setting in a phone or a computer. And the default setting is there that when you have a challenge, you go back to the original setting in the phone or on the computer. Hallelujah. Then you get the phone or the computer to work the way it was supposed to work. And so what happens is that when we come out of these encounters, we go back to the default setting. Hallelujah. Listen, it becomes strange and it becomes uncomfortable and even unusual to you because this is the way you have always thought from you were a child and so it's not supposed to be comfortable getting a mindset that lines up with the will of God is not going to be it uh, will not be easy you have got to put work in it there is going to be discomfort Hallelujah. You are going to feel like a fish out of water. You are going to be out of your comfort zone. The environment is going to challenge you because you are in the process of dethroning a mindset that has been with you for years. And so Paul says, we must be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Hallelujah. And so we must renew the spirit of our minds. Hallelujah. This is how you begin to build a mindset that is going to take you from the place that you are to where God has intended for you to be. Hallelujah. 
It is fundamental and it is in the change of your mind. Paul goes on to say, let this mind be in you. That was in Christ Jesus. In other words, begin to think of yourself the way Jesus thought of himself. Hallelujah. To get a God perspective on who you are and who you have been called to be. And when you begin to listen, you, you, you begin to think on the thought pattern of Christ Jesus. How do you do this? You have begun to, you have got to begin to ask God for his mind. The Bible says in Leviticus 24, 12, that the mind of God can be revealed. That God is willing to show you his mind. Hallelujah. You have got to fill your mind with the word of God. Meditate upon the word day and night. This is how you build or shift a mindset. Hallelujah. The Bible says that a double minded man is unstable in all of his ways. Let not this man believe that he will receive anything from God. I want you to understand today that when you seek to establish a mindset of Christ, you will experience some amount of double-mindedness. Why? Because there is going to be a war between your own mindset and the new mindset. There is going to be a battle for supremacy. Something has got to take rule. Somebody is going to lead your life. Some are, are decisions are going to lead you towards your destiny. Hallelujah. And so there is going to be that measure of instability. And sometimes when we are praying and we are asking God to do this and do that, and we do not receive it, the reason why we do not receive it is because there is instability. Hallelujah. And so, brothers and sisters, a concept or what we declare an idea, it literally means to conceive, to become pregnant with a thought. That's what a concept is or what it means to uh, conceive a thing. In the mind, it literally means uh, to become uh, Pregnant with it, and in your season of destabilization, hallelujah, you have got to be careful that you do not make life altering or destiny decisions. You have got to stay in the presence of God until you become stable, hallelujah. Then you make a decision, hallelujah. Because as much as you can uh, have a concept, you can also become a victim of misconception. Meaning that you receive or conceive in error. Hallelujah. Or you conceive wrongly. You get a wrong idea. And this is a season, brothers and sisters, where the devil is going to take advantage. He will appear as an angel of light. And so, brothers and sisters, when you are dethroning a mindset, when you are making a decision that you are no longer going to stay in a place where your results do not reflect scripture, and you are making a decision that your mind is going to align with the will of God, you have got to ensure that you get to a place of stability. God releases 
whatever he is doing in a stable environment. Hallelujah. The Bible says, upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. In other words, brothers and sisters, God does not build on instability. Hallelujah. He has got to get to the rock on the inside of you. In other words, upon the rock in you, God is going to build his church. Hallelujah. When you become stable in your faith, when you become stable in your belief system, when you become solid, regardless of what is moving around you, when you become firm in your belief in God, then God is going to answer. Then God is going to move the mountain. Then God is going to shift things. Then God is going to elevate you. Hallelujah. Because the reality is, if you are unstable, whatever you burnt out is going to be unstable. Ah, uh, if you are unstable, your environment, your children, your blood. Listen, if you are praying prayers for your family and your loved ones, and you are praying, but there is a measure of doubt as to whether they are ever going to come out, you are going to release instability over your children and your bloodline. And so today they are fine tomorrow. They are wild and out of control because the engine that is supposed to propel them towards their destiny cannot hold on in the same that wheel and the navigator is wobbling. Hallelujah. And so, brothers and sisters, you have got to hold on to that steering wheel and become solid and propel yourself forward regardless of the turbulence that is happening around you. Regardless of what is going on around you, you have got to remain safe when Peter was challenged by Jesus to come out of the boat and to begin to walk on water, Peter was stable when he kept his mind on Jesus, his eyes on Jesus. Hallelujah. The, listen. The waters did not become calmer just to accommodate uh, Peter walking towards Jesus. There is nowhere in scripture that says that. Hallelujah. The water did not become solid under his foot. Hallelujah. In other words, the environment did not change. What changed for Peter was his faith that, listen, listen, Peter was not just walking on water. Peter was walking on his faith because he made a decision to absolutely believe God. Hallelujah. The moment he began to acknowledge what was happening around him, is the moment his faith began to give way and it was the moment he began to sink. And so, brothers and sisters, I want us to recognize this afternoon that the way we think does matter. That the mindset that we have does matter. That no promise in the word of God will be fulfilled in a mindset that will not accommodate it. 
that your mindset can be warring against your health and warring against your prosperity and warring against your progress and warring against the people that God has sent into your life to bless you. Some of us, our minds are so messed up that we cannot receive anything. Hallelujah. Now, if God is going to cause me to give it to your bosom, it does not only mean uh, money or wealth in your bosom. Opportunities can come to your bosom. Open doors can come to your bosom. Hallelujah. Favor can come to your bosom. But some of us, the mindset alone, Every time God is about to bless us, the mindset uh, is like a pellet. It drives the people away. Hallelujah. How do I know that it is a mindset? Your word, some of us. Uh, hallelujah. Not even a compliment. We cannot accept. We begin to think all sorts of things in our minds. Well, what does this person want? What is this person's motive? The person is going about their business and decides to pay you a compliment and you begin to read into it and start thinking all sorts of things. Hallelujah. Somebody decides to give you something. And watch this, sometimes you're praying. Oh God, send somebody to help me. Oh God, send somebody to, to give into my life. And somebody gives you something. And you begin to have a suspicious, listen, the same prayer is being answered. And God, uh, the person gives you something. Some of us, we go as far as taking the thing and throwing it out. Because we do not trust uh, the person who gave it. Hallelujah. And we start thinking all sorts of things. God sent somebody into your life to elevate your life. And oftentimes the elevator has a, a level of thinking and a mindset that is advanced. It is above yours. And because the person don't think like you and don't talk like you and don't act like you, you reject them, yet they are in a far better position to bless you. And you only gravitate towards the people that think like you, look like you, act like you. And you remain in the same state year after year, decade after decade. Hallelujah. Don't you understand that a person that raises and reinforces you in your weakness, the person that does not challenge you to grow, the person that will not correct you, the person who will not speak true to you is an enemy of your soul, an enemy of your purpose, an enemy of your destiny. Hallelujah. The person who sees you falling or the person that sees you in your weakness and celebrates you there. Hallelujah. And comes in to, uh, to justify why you should remain here. Uh, you think they are making you feel better. But the reality is that uh, their agenda is to ensure that you remain in that place so that you do not get out of your company, so that you do not get to another level. A lot of them, it is an insecurity. They do not want to lose the friendship or the relationship. Hallelujah. And so an individual that cannot grow with you, that cannot expand with you, that cannot elevate with you, may be an acquaintance or you may even call them a friend, but they cannot connect to your destiny. Hallelujah. And so you have got to 
Begin to evaluate your relationships. If all that so-called friend calls to talk about is gossip and what this one is doing and what that one is doing, if all this so-called friend calls to tell you or you call the friend to talk about is to magnify your problems and your situations, and you're talking, 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 and there is no solution. There is no activity. There is no word that is coming from the conversations to propel you forward. You have got to rethink these relationships. Hallelujah. Some of us have invested years of our lives. Hallelujah. Our uh, hours of, of each day, we invest two, three, four, five hours on conversations that are not getting us anywhere. Hallelujah. After a while, you must begin to say, well, what value is this person bringing to my life? Why should I be spending 10, 5, 6, 4 hours with you? And when I leave you, there is no change. When I leave you, there is no advantage. When I leave your presence, I am not energized to go after my purpose and my destiny. There is no fundamental change taking place here. You have got to curtail the time. Hallelujah. Some people is a high and a goodbye. Some people, brothers and sisters, if you are serious about getting to the next level and serious about who God has called you to be, you have got to minimize the time because your destiny is time sensitive. The times that you waste, you are never going to beat them again. Your destiny is time sensitive. The thing that God has called you to accomplish has a time span on it. Hallelujah. And so as we close today, if when you leave these conversations, it is warring against the mindset that you are building in Christ, you have got to get rid of it. If thoughts and ideas linger, hallelujah, even some of the programs that you watch on the television, some of us, we have an obsession with certain programs, obsession, or even with social media. Hallelujah. If when you come out, listen, some of us, hours on top of hours, and when you are done, it is not anything that is edifying you. It is not anything, brothers and sisters, that is challenging you. And not anything that is helping to perfect the mindset that you are going after. You have got to cut it out. You have got to minimize your time on social media. Minimize your time on on movies and, and series and what have you on TV that does not edify you. Hallelujah. And you must go after and possess the mind of Christ. If not, this year is going to end and look like last year and look like the last 10 years of your life. You will have a religious and a church experience. But there will be no fundamental transformation in your life. Some of us will look at God and start to lose faith in him. And begin to question his credibility. Because there is no change that is happening. And so as we go into our next segment. I want us to recognize Ah, this afternoon. 
that our minds must be transformed. That our thought processes must begin to cause the thing that we desire to gravitate towards us. That whatever we are feeding into our minds and feeding into our spirits on a consistent basis is going to produce and is going to give us a particular result. Amen. And as we pray over finances and pray over deliverance and pray this morning over physical healing and restoration, the first prayer we're going to pray this morning is over our minds. Hallelujah. That we will begin to possess the mind of Christ. That we will begin to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Amen. So wherever you are today, I want you to lay hands on your own head as a point of contact. And I want you to begin to cast down the Bible says, if you know that there are thoughts and ideas, if you know that there's a mindset, a thought pattern that you know in your know that this is not of God, then as we pray, I want you to open your mouth and begin to cast it down. If it is a mindset of fear, if it is a mindset of struggle, if it is a mindset of poverty, if it's a mindset of doubt and a double-mindedness, if it is a mindset of inconsistency, if it's a mindset that rejects love because of past abuses. Listen, some of us are praying for spouses, but God knows that the mindset that we have, the moment the man or the woman shows up, our we are going to use our mouth and drive them away. And God is saying this afternoon that if you want that spouse, you have got to rectify your mind. Some of us are asking God for businesses and he knows that the mindset that we are, we're going to get the business and the business is going to go down in six months. Hallelujah. We are asking for promotion. And the mindset that we have will cause us to become arrogant and cause us to walk on people and cause us to disregard those below us. And God is doing us a favor this morning. Some of us are asking God for expansion in ministry and to become international and to become national or regional or even global. And God knows that the mindset that we have, we can't withstand the pressure that is going to come. We cannot withstand being praised and being our, uh, our, uh, are oh, given advantages in life. We cannot, brothers and sisters, handle oh, the blessing that God wants to pour out upon us. Hallelujah. And so we're going to pray for the, listen, the thing that you are asking God for. Begin to pray for the mindset to receive and to sustain it. The level that you are asking God for. Begin to pray for the mindset to receive it and to sustain it. Hallelujah. When David was anointed king, after he slew Goliath, he was taken under the wing of Jonathan. And Jonathan began to teach him the protocol. Jonathan began to school him. In kingship, Jonathan began to reprogram his mindset to become king over Israel. Hallelujah. And so when God answers the prayer through a process and a man or a protocol, please recognize it and please walk in it. Let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we apply 
the blood of Jesus over our minds right now. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Lord God Almighty, we ask that your spirit will become a lamp and with it that you will search out the inward parts of our belly. Today, God, we confess and we repent that our mindsets have not been stable, that our mindsets, our thought patterns, the things that we hold in our subconscious, might God, do not line up with your will. Today we confess that we have not wholeheartedly believed you for the thing that we are praying for. Lord God, we will say, Lord Jesus Christ, like the man that Jesus was healing, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. We ask God that you will help our unbelief this morning, that wherever there is shakiness in our faith and in our beliefs, system. We ask God that you will cause us to become firm therein. In the name of Jesus Christ, we ask today, mighty God, that all forms of doubt and all forms of double-mindedness will go as we cast down imaginations and every high thing that seeks to exalt itself against the knowledge of God and we bring every thought into captivity even unto the obedience of Christ. We ask right now, mighty God, in the name of Jesus Christ, that every delusion, every deception, everything that the enemy has mounted and has taken advantage of to increase oppression in our minds, let them give way now in the name of Jesus Christ. Every stronghold of the enemy, mighty God, that has been our erected in our lives, erected in our minds, we cast it down, we tear it down, we destroy it right now, mighty God, in the name of Jesus Christ, Father God, everything in our foundation that has raised up a mindset that does not align with your will, we cast it out right now, in the name of Jesus, Father God, let every evil foundation be destroyed right now in the name of Jesus. Let the foundation that has been built by Christ be established right now, mighty God, in the name of Jesus Christ. We ask God Almighty that you will deliver us Father God, from inconsistencies, deliver us, mighty God, from halfway belief. Deliver us, mighty God, that when we finally believe that when situations and circumstances begin to stir themselves up, that we become unstable. Deliver us, mighty God, by the power of your right hand. We apply the blood of Jesus over our minds. We apply the blood over our thought processes. Mighty God, we declare ah, that we possess the mind of Christ. Lord God, let your word become a fortress in our thinking. Let our thought patterns line up with your word this afternoon. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we ask mighty God that the helmet of salvation will be put on and will remain over our minds that you will cause us to gird up the loins of our minds, Father. For your name's sake and your mercy's sake, every mind blocking, mind numbing, mind controlling spirit, every manipulation of our thought processes, let them be bound up right now in the name of Jesus Christ. We speak against confusion. We speak against depression. We speak against even suicidal thoughts. Thoughts that war against your truth in our lives. In the name of Jesus Christ. And we bring every thought into captivity. Even unto the obedience of Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus. Glory be to his name. Hallelujah. Amen. At this time, we're just going to be doing two more prayers. Amen. 
I'm going to ask Sister Norma to do one of the prayers, amen, as we focus on restoration and healing, then I'll do the prayer of deliverance and financial release. Amen. Amen. Glory be to his name. Amen. So we're going to be praying a prayer of restoration at this time and healing, whether it's healing in the mind, healing in the emotions, Amen. Healing from trauma. Amen. And, and asking God to restore the years. Sometimes we have made decisions that have eaten up our years, eaten up our purpose and our destinies. And we're asking God to restore those years in the name of Jesus. Amen. So Sister Norma is going to be leading us in this prayer, the prayer of restoration and healing. Amen. Yes, the Lord. Praise the Lord. Mighty God. Hallelujah. 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 Wherever you are this morning, just lift your heart. Ah, uh, Jesus, this morning, God, we come before your presence, mighty God. Father, we thank you this morning. We bless your name. Be glorified in the heavens, mighty God. Be glorified in the heart. Be magnified, hallelujah, for you are God and there is none like you, none compares to you this morning. Mighty God, we come before your presence this morning. We thank you, God Almighty, that you are the God, mighty God, who we look to. You are the God who we can rest assured, mighty God, that whatever we ask in your name, you will do it unto us. Because your word Mighty God, you have given your word unto us that we must ask and it shall be given. This morning, we thank you, God, for restoration. Restoration in the mind, in our spirit. Mighty God, our spirit man, in the name of Jesus. We decree and declare, God, hallelujah, that whatever the enemy rob us, whatever the enemy has stole from us this morning, we decree and declare it. Mighty God, in the name of Jesus, Father, in the name of Jesus, we, mighty God, call upon you because, God, we know you're a God who answer prayer. For your word declare, God, that you are not a man, that you should lie. And this morning, oh God Almighty, your people are before you. Mighty God, you know them by name and nature. Mighty God, you know every strand of your number on their head. Mighty God, you know them. Oh, God Almighty, because you have called us by our name. Mighty God, we come before you this morning, decree and declaring God, that God, you will send restoration to our minds, our spirit, our home, our children, everything, God, that is concerning us. Mighty God, we decree and declare. Mighty God, restoration. Oh, God Almighty, in every, every Anybody, Lord God, who are, who, have, who are sick this morning, in the name of Jesus, we decree and declare restoration over your body. For God Almighty, your, your word declares in the mighty name of Jesus that healing, oh God, is the children's bread this morning. And as we come before you this morning, oh God Almighty, without fear or without doubt, God, that we know you're going to do it for us this morning, do it for your people, mighty God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we declare, mighty God, a comeback, because God, every setback is a comeback in the name of Jesus. Mighty God, we go, mighty God, in the enemy camp this morning, and we take back what the devil has stolen from us our peace of mind oh god almighty our prosperity oh god almighty everything god that is concerned us our health mighty god our joy our peace in the name of jesus christ of nazareth we snatch it out of the enemies and this morning god because we serve a great big wonderful god always victorious. God, you are watching over us this morning in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father God, we ask God Almighty that God Almighty, you, oh God, 
will step into some territory right now, mighty God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, mighty God, and take back, ah, Jesus, what the enemy, mighty God, has stolen from us, mighty God. We decree and declare restoration over our family. We decree and declare restoration, mighty God, in our ministry. We decree, decree and declare restoration, mighty God. Hallelujah over our finances in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We decree and declare restoration over our health. Mighty God, our joy in the name of Jesus. For your word declared that the joy of the Lord is our strength. And this morning, mighty God, hallelujah, hallelujah, we decree and declare that you, oh God Almighty, have spoken. Mighty God, you have sent your word and your word is yea and amen. We thank you, mighty God, for what you're about to do in our midst, even now, God, and what you are doing, mighty God. You are restoring back families. Ah, Jesus, you are restoring back marriages. Ah, Mama Kundara Basaya. You are restoring back mindset, mighty God. You are restoring back, oh God Almighty, your people. Oh God, you are putting back families together. In the name of Jesus, break down chains, break down walls and barriers around your people, mighty God. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, mash up the plan of the enemy this morning. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, mighty God, we ask God that you will go before us, mighty God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, break chains, break fetters, mighty God. Oh, God Almighty, because you, God, are in control. Oh, God, we declare that there is none like you, God. None beside you, none above you this morning. We thank you, God, that you are the healing Jesus. Hallelujah. When you rose on the third day, God, you rose with healing in your wings this morning. So we decree and declare, mighty God, restoration over our bodies. Oh, Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, mighty God. Hallelujah. 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 We bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. We glorify your name, mighty God. We thank you, God Almighty, for your word. For your word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Mighty God, your word is like a two-edged sword. Oh, God Almighty, it's cut through mirrors. Mighty God, but if you said, God Almighty, there must be restoration in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, wherever your people is this morning. Oh, God Almighty, we ask God that you will, mighty God, pour out upon them this morning. Oh, God Almighty, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father God, we receive, mighty God, restoration this morning. We receive your healing this morning. We receive, God Almighty, our mindset, God Almighty, that our mindset, Father God, will be like you this morning, God Almighty. We ask God that you will come into our midst, oh God, come into our homes, our family, our communities, oh God Almighty, in our country, mighty God, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We know, God, that you are in control. We know, God Almighty, that you are in control, mighty God. We thank you, God, that you are in control. Hallelujah. And whatever your word said, God Almighty, it shall be done in the mighty name of Jesus. Have your way, mighty God. Have your way in the name of Jesus as we give you thanks, as we give you praise, as we glorify your name, as we magnify your name, as we lift up your marvelous name, as we magnify and, and mighty God and, and exalt your name this morning, oh God Almighty, or this afternoon, because God, you are in control. You are the God who restore, mighty God. Oh God, you are the God who restore whatever the local stole from us, God Almighty, in the name of Jesus. Restore unto your people, mighty God. For you, God, hallelujah, as, as spoken it, mighty God, and it shall be done in the name of Jesus. 
We ask God Almighty that you will have your way in our midst as we give you thanks, as we give you praise in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. We bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Over to you, Pastor. Amen. 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 At this time, we're going to be addressing any kind or form of demonic oppression and um, addressing financial handicaps. Amen. So wherever you are this morning or afternoon and you are having a challenge in either of these areas, I want you to lift up your faith and just believe God for his move over your life. There is nothing too hard for God to do. And as we have established before, when the Bible says that if you bring the tithes and offering, that he will pour you out a blessing. We understand that it's not just somebody giving you money. It's a, it's an idea. It's a connection. It is favor. It's access. It's an open door. And so you must also recognize when God answers the prayers. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you that you are Jehovah Gabor. We thank you that you are the Lord of hosts, the God of war, the one who is mighty in battle. Right now, Father, upon the authority of your word and the shed blood of the Lamb, we lift up those that are possessed and even oppressed by the wicked one. Mighty God, we pray today, Lord God, that you will loose them and cause them to be let go. Father God Almighty, that every spirit that binds up the mind, that binds up the body, that binds up mighty God, futures that binds up purpose and destiny, that the judgment of God will begin to fall upon them right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, we ask today, God, that you will arise, that you will arise in fury and in judgment, and that you will cause the activities of the wicked one to be rendered powerless and to be destroyed in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh God Almighty, loose the bands of oppression right now. Let shackles break. Let yokes be destroyed in the mighty name of Jesus. Let those of us that have been in prison, Lord God, let the foundation of the prisons begin to shake. Let the foundations, mighty God, begin to break up. Let the angels of God be deployed Lord, even now, Father God Almighty, to lead captivity into captivity. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our oh God Almighty, loose from the crown of our heads to the soles of our feet. We cast out every demonic spirit that has overtaken the souls of any of our loved ones, any of our associates, mighty God, anybody in our environments, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Let the oppressed go free right now, God Almighty. Any believer, Father God, any child of Abraham that is oppressed, mighty God, that demonic spirits have attached themselves to them, mighty God, expressing themselves, whether in sickness and disease, whether, mighty God, in negative patterns and cycles, whether are uh, by attracting one type of person or a destructive kind of personality to their lives. Mighty God, let the oppression give way right now upon the authority of your word. Let the oppression break right now. Let every spell and every chain, every incantation, every curse, let them begin to give way right now, mighty God. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, you have declared in your word that evil shall slay the wicked and they that hate the righteous shall become desolate letter according to your word and it be established right now in the name of Jesus we suffer no which to live mighty God for your name's sake and your mercy's sake let divine us become mad Lord God almighty let every altar raised up to familiar spirits give way right now mighty God for your name's sake and your mercy's sake glorify yourself even in the midst of your people in the name of Jesus Christ, by the enablement of your spirit.
spirit. Oh God, let the chains break and the fetters fall right now, mighty God. Let liberty be released upon your children for your name's sake and your mercy's sake. Father God, we lift up our financial life, our financial health, and our financial future before you. Lord God Almighty, let the spirit of poverty and lack, let the spirit of our financial slavery be broken from over our lives, over our bloodlines, and over our families today. In the name of Jesus Christ, our oh God, we decree over our lives that we will no longer struggle to find bread. Lord God, that we will no longer live from hand to mouth in the name of Jesus Christ. Father God, that the evil works that have penetrated our families because of lack, that their powers will be broken in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord God Almighty, we pray that the key to our prosperity will be revealed. Lord God, that the wealth-yielding ideas will come, that the promotions will come, that the increase in salaries will come. Mighty God, that men will begin to give into our bisoms. Mighty God, that the destiny helpers will emerge. Father, for your name's sake and your mercy's sake, that you will cause us to live above the economic climate of our regions and of our nations. Our oh God, we pray that you will move by your spirit and that you will prevail. We ask that you will glorify yourself even in the midst of your people. Our oh God, let the blessing of the Lord that makes rich and adds no sorrow to it. Let it become a portion in blessing, bless us, and in multiplying, multiply us for your name's sake and your mercy's sake. We ask today, God, that you will glorify yourself even in the midst of your people and that you will cause us to increase and abound in every single area of our lives as we give you praise and as we give you thanks. In the exalted name.